But now we're going to look at the hot spots. Can you tell what's happening in a conversation? Can you start to find the hot spots to see the discrepancies between someone's words and someone's actions? Now, I know it seems really obvious, but when you're having a conversation with someone that you suspect of deception, attitude is by far the most overlooked but telling of indicators. An honest person is going to be cooperative. They're going to show they're on your side. They're going to be enthusiastic. They're going to be willing and helpful in getting you to the truth. They're going to be willing to brainstorm, name suspects, provide details. They're going to say, hey, maybe it was those guys in payroll that forged those checks. They're going to be infuriated if they sense they're wrongly accused throughout the entire course of the interview, not just in flashes. They'll be infuriated throughout the entire course of the interview. And if you ask someone honest, what should happen to whoever did forge those checks? An honest person is much more likely to recommend strict rather than lenient punishment. Now, let's say you're having that exact same conversation with someone deceptive. That person may be withdrawn, look down, lower their voice, pause, be kind of herky-jerky. Ask a deceptive person to tell their story. They're going to pepper it with way too much detail in all kinds of irrelevant places. And then they're going to tell their story in strict chronological order. And what a trained interrogator does is they come in and in very subtle ways, in, over the course of several hours, they will ask that person to tell their story backwards. And then they'll watch them squirm and track which questions produce the highest volume of deceptive tells. Why do they do that? Well, we all do the same thing. We rehearse our words, but we rarely rehearse our gestures. We say yes, we shake our heads no. We tell very convincing stories, we slightly shrug our shoulders. We commit terrible crimes and we smile at the delight in getting away with it. Now that smile is known in the trade as duping delight. And we're going to see that in several videos moving forward, but we're going to start for those of you that don't know him, this is presidential candidate John Edwards, who shocked America by fathering a child out of wedlock. We're going to see him talk about getting a paternity test. See now if you can spot him saying yes while shaking his head no, slightly shrugging his shoulders. Lots I'd of be happy to participate in one. Uh, I know that it's not possible that this child could be mine because of the timing of events. So I know it's not possible. Happy to take a paternity test and would love to see it happen. Are you going to do that soon? Is there somebody that well, you can't? I'm only one side. <laughs> I'm only one side of the test, but I'm, I'm happy to participate in one. Okay, those head shakes are much easier to spot once you know to look for them. Now, there are going to be times when someone makes one expression while masking another that just kind of leaks through in a flash. Murderers are known to leak sadness. Your new joint venture partner might shake your hand, celebrate, go out to dinner with you, and then leak an expression of anger. And we're not all going to become facial expression experts overnight here. But there's one I can teach you that's very dangerous and that's easy to learn, and that's the expression of contempt. Now, with anger, you've got two people on an even playing field. It's still somewhat of a healthy relationship, but when anger turns to contempt, you've been dismissed. It's associated with moral superiority, and for that reason, it's very, very hard to recover from. Here's what it looks like. It's marked by one lip corner pulled up and in. It's the only asymmetrical expression, and in the presence of contempt, whether or not deception follows, and it doesn't always follow, look the other way, go the other direction, reconsider the deal, say, no, thank you, I'm not coming up for just one more nightcap, thank you. Science has surfaced many, many more indicators. We know, for example, we know liars will shift their blink rate, point their feet towards an exit. They will take barrier objects and put them between themselves and the person that's interviewing them. They'll alter their vocal tone, often making, them, making their vocal tone much lower. Now, here's the deal. These behaviors are just behaviors. They're not proof of deception. They're red flags. We're human beings. We make deceptive, flailing gestures all over the place all day long. They don't mean anything in and of themselves. But when you see clusters of them, that's your signal. Look, listen, probe, ask some hard questions, get out of that very comfortable mode of knowing, walk into curiosity mode, ask more questions. Have a little dignity. Treat the person you're talking to with rapport. Don't try to be like those folks on Law and & Order and those other TV shows that pummel their subjects into submission. Don't be too aggressive. It doesn't work. Now, we've talked a little bit about how to talk to someone who's lying and how to spot a lie. And as I promised, we're now going to look at what the truth looks like. And I'm going to show you two videos. Two mothers, 
One is lying, one is telling the truth. And these were surfaced by researcher David Matsumoto in California. And I think they're an excellent example of what the truth looks like. This mother, Diane Downs, shot her kids at close range, drove them to the hospital while they bled all over the car, claimed a scraggy-haired stranger did it. And you'll see when you see the video, she can't even pretend to be an agonizing mother. What you want to look for here is an incredible discrepancy between horrific events that she describes and her very, very cool demeanor. And if you look closely, you'll see duping delight throughout this video. But at night, when I close my eyes, I can see Christy reaching her hand out to me while I'm driving, and the blood just keep coming out of her mouth. And that, maybe it'll fade too with time, but I, I don't think so. That haunts me the most. 